Before we can sharpen our shear, we need to take the shear apart. We start by backing the screw out. Once the screw is out, we want to remove both the screw and the washer. There's always a washer in these shears, um, so we want to make sure that the screw comes out along with the washer. Um, also, this screw has a split end to it. It's actually split right down the middle of the screw, which allows a little bit of spring tension as well. We'll explain why that's important when we put this back together. But once you have your hardware out of your blades, make sure you put it in a safe place. This is just the top of the Okami polishing compound. Makes a great place to store screws and other parts hardware from the shears. So now that we have the shear apart, we'll go ahead and start the sharpening process. Before we start sharpening, we need to set our clamp. Setting the clamp is simple. We have numbers that run down along the upright of the clamp. You can see that they start about 5 degrees above zero and go all the way down to about 55 degrees. You can actually go just a little bit past that. So it's very simple to actually set the clamp where the two parts of the clamp come together. It forms a line right down the center of the upper part of the clamp and the lower part of the clamp. Where that line is is where you set your angle and right now we have it set for 45 degrees. To do, the, to do any adjustment to the clamp, you just loosen the small knob. You can slide the upright up and down and set whichever angle you wish. Turn it slightly on its side like this so we'll, it'll allow you to hold the clamp and the upright in position. Use your thumb to hold it in position as you tighten the tension knob back down. We have it set for right at about 45 degrees. Lock it down and now we are ready to sharpen. We're going to place the clamp and start in the sharpen position so we can work on the sharpening wheel. Now that we've set our clamp to 45 degrees, we're going to go ahead and start the sharpening. Most of your higher end hollow ground convex front surface shears will be somewhere between 40 to 45 degrees in most cases. I always start my scratch test at 45 degrees because there's not really a discernible angle on the blade that you can test with the angle gauge. What I'm doing right now is I'm clamping the shear into the clamp. I'm clamping it halfway over the pivot hole with the pivot hole to the right hand side of the clamp. The reason that I do this is as I make a pass across the wheel, I don't want to bump into the clamp. This keeps me away from any portion of the blade that I'm actually going to be doing any sharpening to. It also allows me to seat the blade into the clamp the same amount when I take it out and when I put it back in to do the polishing. Now that I have this set at 45 and my blade is in the clamp, I'm going to do a scratch test. So I'm going to hold the blade up against the wheel. And I'm going to spin downward with my thumb. I'm going to see where this scratches the edge. I'm going to lift this out of the arm. And then I'm going to show you the scratch test. See if we can get that in light. A little bit hard to see. You can actually see you get the gleam on either side and right here, there we go, there's that scratch right on the edge itself. Now I know I'm right at the edge so 45 looks good. I'm going to go ahead and make a pass across the wheel. So we start by starting the machine up. Make sure that your blade is straight in the clamp. You want the cutting edge of your blade in line with the top portion of the clamp. And then very lightly Touch the outside corner of the wheel at the beginning of the cutting edge. Roll into the wheel and come across to the tip and come away. I'm going to make one pass and then feel for a burr. We have a burr and we'll also check the cosmetics of the edge as well. So let's take a look at the edge real quick. And there we go. You can see we've got a good clean edge all the way down to the tip. So with a burr and with a good clean looking edge, this blade is now ready to be honed on the inside. This view of the blade before we start, you can see right down below the bottom of the screw hole right here, there's a line that begins on the inside of the shear and it rotates itself all the way around the top where the cutting edge is 
from the back where the right area is behind the screw and all the way back up to the tip. That's called the inside line. This inside line is put into the shear to lend some strength to the inside of the blade. If you cut just an angle into the hollow on the inside of the blade, you'd have a very weak surface for the blades to work up against one another. They would tear themselves apart, basically, when you did your cut. So we're flattening out an inside portion of the blade so that the blades have something to ride up against as they cut the material that's put between them. So what we need to do is work the shear on our honing blocks to reestablish this line before we move on to our polishing step. We'll show you that next. Now that we've done the sharpening on the shear and we've seen that we need to recreate that inside line that's on the shear, we will start with the deburr block. This one's a little faded, it's hard to see. Some come stamped more clearly than others, but this does say deburr on this, on this block. On this one it says finish. This block is coarser than this block. So what we will do is we'll start with the coarser block to pull the burr back. Now as you lay the blade across the block, you don't have to lay it straight across, you might want to turn it at a slight degree of pitch, maybe three degrees or so, because there's a set to the scissor. There's actually a bend in the blade this way here where it bends inward towards the inside and the tip kind of bends over just a little bit. This allows for a shearing action of the blades because they need to be bent in towards one another. If they were perfectly flat, it would fold the material that are between the blades. So we will lay this across the block put three fingers of our left hand over the top of the blade and this hand is just a guide. You're not going to be doing anything with this with this hand other than just holding it in position. The pressure comes from these fingers and the drag comes from these fingers. And we're going to drag the shear back towards myself. I'll lift off, again start, and then pull back and then I will go forward one more time and then I'll work back and forth and I'm going to do about 10 or 15 backstrokes, so we'll do 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you also want to work the inside surface of the shear as well, so you can move it over slightly. Do a little bit of work on the inside of the ride area behind the screw, and then go back over toward your tip. Come to a complete stop. You need to come to a complete stop. You don't want to come off with motion because you can radius the inside surface of the blade as you come off. Once you've come to a complete stop, lift the blade off of the block. We're now ready to start with the finish block. Again, we will place the blade, blade away from me, three fingers over the blade, pull back towards myself to start, and this time we're just going to work back and forth. The reason that we don't have to stop and then go forward again is we're not pulling burrs back this time. The burr has already been pulled back. We will take the remainder of the burr off with the polishing wheel when we do our polishing step. A lot of it will come off when we wipe the shear down before we actually do our polishing as well. I'm going to do about 15, maybe 20 backstrokes, and then I'm going to come to a complete stop, lift off of the block, and then we'll check our inside line. Let's see if we can see this. All right. And you can see that I have reestablished an inside line on the shear, and we are ready to move on to the next step, which will be polishing this blade. Now that we've finished honing the inside of the first blade, we're going to clamp the shear back in the clamp in the sharpened position halfway over the pivot hole with the pivot hole to the right. Once we clamp the shear into the clamp, we're going to flip the whole clamp over and do our polishing. Now the wheel spins downward as the machine runs. So you want your blade to face downward on this wheel. This is a soft wheel. You don't want your blade in the sharpened position with the edge facing up towards the wheel because it can cut into the wheel. It will damage the wheel and possibly even damage the shear. So make sure your blade is in the down position. Your clamp is in the honing position. We will start our machine up and we will apply some polishing compound to the wheel. Just a light touch, enough to cloud it up. Now we will work back and forth. We'll do about 10 backstrokes. So this would be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you want to, you can work your tip just a little bit and your throat just a little bit. And then do a couple of complete passes just to make sure that you've gotten the full length of the shear. Once done, come away from the wheel, 
and we're going to check the inside of the blade. Now see if we can see this with the video. It's always a little bit hard because of lighting, but I'm looking for trash on the inside of the blade. You can see a little bit right here in the corner, and I can see that all the way down the blade. I see it up at the tip just a little bit as well, a little bit better. But if you have trash on the inside of the blade, you've reached your edge. Now that we're done with our polishing, we will put our clamp back in the arm. We'll shut the machine off. We will remove the blade from the clamp, and we will wipe it down. Be careful as you wipe the blade down. Do not run your fingers right down the blade. You don't want to cut yourself. And we will set that blade aside, and now we'll start on the next blade. Now that I've finished polishing the first blade, I'm going to set it to the right-hand side of the machine. That way I know that it's done, and I'll start on my second blade. We start again by clamping the shear into the clamp, halfway over the pivot hole with the pivot hole to the right. We'll go ahead and do a scratch test on the shear. I usually sharpen each blade the same angle from one blade to the other. But If you wanted to do a scratch test, you can at least see where you're at. Lift this up and take a look. The scratch test looks good. So we'll go ahead and start our sharpening. Again, make sure you're in the sharpened position. We'll start the machine up. I'm going to make a very light touch the outside corner of the wheel where the edge begins, and then run across the wheel to the tip, come straight away from the wheel, and we'll feel for a burr. We'll check our edge, which looks good, just like the last time. So we have our burr, we have our edge, we are ready now to hone the inside of this blade. Now that we have sharpened our second blade, we will go ahead and deburr our second blade. Again, place your blade over the block, blade away from you, three fingers of the left hand, pull back towards yourself to start again and then we'll work back and forth. Make sure you work your right area as well. Come back over to the tip, come to a complete stop, lift off, and we'll do the same thing with the finish. come to a complete stop, lift off. It will check the inside line again, which looks good. So we are ready to move on to our next step, which is polishing this blade. Now that we've honed the inside of our second blade, we will clamp the second blade back in the clamp, halfway over the pivot hole with the pivot hole to the right. Flip the clamp from the sharpened position into the honing position. Turn our machine on. Add a little compound to the wheel, and we'll work back and forth. Work our tip a little extra and our throat a little bit extra. Make a couple of complete passes, and come right away from the wheel. Again, we check for the trash on the inside of the blade. I have reached the inside, so I'm done polishing. We'll shut the machine down, remove the blade from the clamp, and we'll go ahead and wipe it down. Now that both of our blades have been polished, we're ready to put the shear back together and do our tests. Now that we've polished both of our blades, we're ready to put the blades back together. We'll take our screw. Remember, this is a split-end screw, so we have to be careful how we place it back in the blades. You want to make sure that you put the screw into the recessed hole in the blade. Whenever you're taking shears apart, always be paying attention to what you're doing. You want to be able to put the blades back together in their proper orientation. I'm going to seat the clamp into the blade with the washer. I'll put my thumb over the screw, mate the two together, the two blades, slide the one blade down and switch fingers. This will allow me to hold on to the screw, it won't go flying out of the scissor, 
and we will take our screwdriver I'm going to back up just a little bit to let it seed into position it kind of popped into place that way I know I've caught my threads and I'm going to go ahead and tighten the shear up. Now you don't want to get the shear too tight and remember too this is a split end screw so it's going to feel a little tighter kind of tricky just a little bit. You don't want the shear to be really really loose. You don't need it to be floppy loose. Um, you just need to make sure that it's you know, reasonably secure. Where is that? Well, if you have any trouble with this, make sure you call us at Wolf at 1-800-888-3832. This is a little bit hard to explain in a video. Hard, not easy to explain over the phone as well, but we can help you out. And after a few tries, you'll get this down pat without a problem. All I'm doing is making sure I don't have too much wiggle on that blade. So we'll keep tightening slightly until we get to a comfortable amount of wiggle. Just a little bit more. All right, and that feels pretty good. Now at this point, we need to remove burrs, and we'll show you that with a little bit of paper towel. Now that we've put the shear back together, make sure you keep it in the open position. It's important that it stays in this open position. That way we can remove the burrs or any leftover burrs that are there from the polishing step. Remember that um, you have burrs on either blade off of the polish and you want to make sure that you remove those gently from the blade. The way you do that is you cut the burrs off but it's best to cut them off on paper towel. And what we want to do is we want to do a, a portion of a cut about a third of the way down the blade for the first cut and then we'll do the same thing again for the second cut go a little bit further down about two-thirds of the way down the blade and then finally we'll do a complete cut. This will ease the burrs off of the blade because of the paper towel. Typically we use something like Viva or something along those lines. It's a, it's a paper towel that has very little wood grain in it and is excellent for removing burrs. Now that our burrs have been removed we can go ahead and do our free fall test and we'll go ahead and do that in just a sec. To do our free fall check on the shear we want to make sure that the tip is pointing straight up at the ceiling and we're going to drop one blade against the other. Now I may have to loosen the shear or tighten the shear, I'm not sure which, depending upon how the shear actually does um, on, off of this drop test. So we'll let this fall and you can see the shear is really just way too loose. So even though I got it reasonably tight to remove the burrs, I still have to do a little bit more work to the shear in order to get it to drop properly. The free fall test, you want it to stop at about the halfway point. It can be just a little bit pr proud of that, or it can stop a little prior to the halfway point, but you're shooting for right around that target right there where the blades close about halfway up the cut. So we'll just tighten the screw up slightly and just a little bit really does go a long way so make sure you test frequently as you do your cutting. Alright, now that is almost just a little bit too tight. So what we'll do is we'll check and see if the washer is seated. Most people don't realize that you do need to wiggle this back and forth because that washer was put into the shear. Sometimes it doesn't cup up onto the head of the screw properly. So we'll give this a good wiggle and then we'll drop test again. And you can see how much it moved. So what we need to do, just a little tighter, let her fall again. You can see it's a little bit falling a little prior to where the center point is that actually looks pretty good at this point and we'll go ahead and stop there and we'll do our test now to test the shear, to test the shear we're going to test on Kleenex what we do is we'll test on two layers first to see if we have a good clean cut all the way to the tip which we do then we will go from two layers to one layer and do that same test See if we have a good clean cut right to the tip. Make sure that there's no catch at the tip as well. You want the Kleenex to just fall away without any catch, which we're doing fine. Next in line will be a wet test on the Kleenex. So we'll just spray it down so it's wet. Open up the shear and do a test cut. 
it should cut the Kleenex clean all the way to the tip. All right, that looks good. No catches, no pull. So final test would be here. As I cut the hair, I'm looking for any hair slide and I'm making sure it cuts clean all the way to the tip. This hair cuts well. So we'll just wipe it down and it is ready to go back to your customer.